Let's see what you got. Okay. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Woo! Oh! oh, not bad, not bad, not bad. There Thank you, go. you, brother. Of course, of Thank course, you. of course. <laughs> All right, shall we walk? Yeah, let's do it. Nice. Well, hey, for those of you who may not know, we have a very special treat today. I'm joined by none other than Todd Klein. He's a community and health and wellness leader out here in Austin. And not only that, he's consistently been ranked the best yoga teacher in Austin. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. It's beautiful out here and get to hang, chat with you for a bit. Great way to spend an evening. I have to ask, if a yoga mat could talk, what would your yoga mat say about you? Please clean me. <laughs> Please, just a little, Please. just a little bit of soap. Just a little bit of soap. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I'm guilty of, you know, I go and take my class, sweat all over my mat, roll it up, and just shove it into my car. I'm not gonna lie, I've done the exact same thing many times. And it's only until that smell hits, you're like, oh. That's, that's the time, the to, time to get the hose. Or just buy a new mat. I have a question from a viewer. Okay. It's a pretty standard question, so I've added a little bit of a spin on it. Okay. If you could teach your practice to any person from history and then have a conversation with them, who would that be? Mmm, mmm. Gosh, you know, the first person who came to mind, and it's not so much a historical figure, more present, is Elon Musk. Elon, you're gonna help Elon with his down dogs? I'm gonna help Elon with his down dogs. You know, if he's gonna be running the world like he is and being a pioneer of all things tech and what seems like everything to me, I feel like it could uh, do him some good to have good posture, feel good, make sure he stays healthy and well. What do you think is a common misconception that people have when they think about yoga and spirituality, mm. right? I would say, in my experience and hearing from others, that if someone already belongs to some sort of religious sect, that this is gonna, this is gonna conflict. I've heard this as well. Exactly, I mean, I feel like it's a philosophy that will only really enhance your relationship to whatever religion you belong to or any, any group like that, any spiritual practice group. Um, it's only going to enhance the, just the knowing more deeply about yourself and just give you a little bit more insight and, and yeah, I would say it's, a, it's something that could complement whatever else that you practice very well. A practice is like the microcosm of a greater macrocosm of all of life and so uh, that one, say, hour that you practice, so many things can come up and you can kind of, if you are open to it, discover things about yourself see the way that you show up, especially during challenging times, like where does your mind go? How do you respond or react? Say if you're holding a chair pose, which is like a little squats. Uh, I'm for, familiar with the chair pose. Yeah. It's, it's challenging to me at times, I'll tell you that. Yeah, some would say it's their nemesis pose. Um, and yeah, just, you know, it's an opportunity to check in with oneself and to gain insight as to how do I respond in a pressure situation. And yeah. if you can kind of catch yourself in the moment while maybe you have a bit of a breakdown or you start what I used to do when I started taking practice, kind of mentally cursing the teacher. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, looking back at it afterwards was like, oh, you know, that, was, that wasn't very nice. That wasn't very kind. This person's trying to do a nice thing for me and like make me healthier and here I am like getting upset. But the beautiful thing about that space is it's, it's a space to be held by the teacher, facilitator, mm. for people to have whatever experience they get to have. If you had to say like pick three things that are the core pieces of the container for a good yoga class or a mm. successful practice where you feel, because I'm sure you feel like, you, you know when you resonate with people, right? Mm -hmm. You totally. really feel it. What are the things you would say are critical to set up that container. Man, yeah, I mean, there's so many things that I could speak into, but bringing it down to maybe three, I would say one, trying to keep the space free of distraction. Mm. And so that's from me as the, as the teacher, not me myself getting distracted, yeah. making sure I'm a good role model and, and making sure others aren't being distracting for others. So people can be in their space and 
stay focused, stay present. So yeah, free of distraction. Music, music can become just so personal and oh, wow, that's amazing. Wow, wow. All right, so it's interesting you say that because effectively a lot of the core things you need to create the container is actually not about addition. It's about subtraction. Oh, yeah, I love that. You see that. what I'm saying? Yeah, that was You're beautifully saying. put. Are you a yoga teacher, Noah? <laughs> You're not telling me? This, this has been the experience for, for yoga for me, has just been the surprise at how damn noisy my brain is. Would you have any advice for somebody who feels that same way, where they feel like their mind just won't quiet down? Yeah, you know, I think, um, I think the big mistakes we can make, or I know I can make, is getting upset when those distractions come up because mm. that I feel like I'm doing the practice wrong. So instead of like eschewing that and saying like, try not to go there, instead, I like to pose to people like, embrace that, acknowledge mm. all of that. And then if you can, bring in a sense or practice of being sweet and being patient with that chatter. Interesting and it kind of makes it die down. It's like this saying, what you resist persists and what you look at Ooh. disappears. What you look at disappears and what you resist persists. Did I say that right? You said it in the other order, but that works the perfectly <laughs> fine. Oh, that works just fine as well. It is so interesting to me because it's a very cerebral game. Mm. Like yoga is about the body, but so much of it isn't what's going on in the room itself, it's about what's going on in the room that is your brain mm. as you try to calm everything down. Yeah, and I would even add to that, you know, it is, we are multi-layered and we're just working with ourselves. So yeah, we're touching physical, we're touching on the mental, the emotional, the energetic, the more subtle kind of parts of ourselves. And, you know, I'll just say spirit. Do you think there's an intersection in some way with masculinity and yoga. Mm. You th I feel like it's a very healthy thing, especially for men to go about the process mm. of doing yoga. Do you have any thoughts on that or anything you could speak to on that front? As a, as a man, maybe my upbringing is different. I grew mm. up with two sisters and living Same. with my mom. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And so I felt like maybe early on that maybe that feminine essence got instilled in me or a healthy feminine because we all have that we all have masculine and feminine within us and mm. some of us are predominantly masculine some are predominantly feminine and that doesn't have to be exclusive to the gender that you are but I know for me it's like I tend to be on the masculine side or being vulnerable um, or a past version of myself like being vulnerable especially with like another man you know like sharing my yeah. story and it's like oh no like is this person gonna think differently of me or they're gonna say this or that about me but for some reason there's just there can seem to be this block in being vulnerable and being open don't want to be seen as being like being seen as a wuss being yeah. seen as like a like yeah. you're soft soft like you're exactly you know and i think even yeah. though it's okay for men to be soft it's definitely okay and or it, soft uh, soft like gentle right exactly you want Maybe to be not soft like a pushover but. right not a pushover and there there's a balance it's like there's a phrase that i heard once tender defender you know tender as a, defender as a, as a man being in your masculine you want to be able to you want to be able to flow between both and know when the appropriate one is to use as a man you know it's kind of or the masculine is the job to like hold space for others mm and to protect, to provide. These are kind of like the classical uh, things that are attached to the masculine and, and things that I resonate with too as, yeah, as a man, but also the ability to stop and listen, you know? You know, as a guy can kind of want to just solve things, uh, especially when talking to a girl and she's, say, upset at you. Just want to uh, fix her problem. I'm, tr I'm trying to fix it. I'm trying to fix it. And it's like, hold on, hold on. Like, actually, they just need to be listened to. They just need to be yeah. heard. They need to be held in that space. Even if mm. it's something about you, it's like, that's not the time to be aggressive. That is not the time to exert your dominance or your maybe more masculine 
aggressive side. That is the time to, to be gentle, a gentleman, if you will. Is the world we live in today one that you're happy leaving to your future children? And if not, what can we do to make things a little bit brighter? Mm, wow, Oof. that's a big question. That's a very weighty question. And you know, for me, uh, you know, any period of time is gonna have its challenges. And I think it takes just becoming aware of what those challenges are, how to overcome them, and just taking responsibility, making sure, you know, making sure that you're walking the walk. You know, especially as you are, if you're bringing up kids in the world, you know, they, they see you as a role model, or at least I can see this like through my parents growing yeah, up. And, same. You know, they say, say things and then might do something differently. And it just cre creates this kind of mixed signal and almost gives permission to be like, okay, well, mom and dad said this, but then they did this. So it's okay to, it's okay to do that. It's okay to behave that mm. way. This kind of brings it back to yoga as walking that, that narrow path, that balanced path between aggressive versus soft and just trying to find that, that middle point, middle ground, and also to recognize that you're not gonna get it right 100% of the time and mistakes will be made. And so to have that ability to forgive oneself easily and just mm. learn from whatever it is. And something I heard recently is we're emotional beings and when a mistake is made and we kind of hold on to it, it creates this density. And when you can work through releasing the charge around it, mm. that emotion, yeah. you know, what you gain is wisdom. Cause you're no longer, Beautiful. you're yeah. no longer attached to whatever the emotion was, you're able to let it go. And now you can receive that wisdom and then be able to move forward from there. That's beautiful. I wholeheartedly resonate with that. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. Mm, mm. Have some grace, have some love for yourself. Take the time to listen to your body, listen to your feelings and trust yourself. With that being said, thank you so much for coming on this walk with me. It's been, it's been so wonderful. It's mm. an honor. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank y'all. Yeah. Thank you for being so wonderful. Thank you for coming. Have a wonderful day.